Hello and welcome to this short video on Opera 3 Open Period Accounting. My name is Steve Power and I'm one of the product specialists here at Pegasus Software. And over the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to go through and show you how Opera 3 Open Period Accounting works and the advantages this can bring to the Opera 3 users. Open Period Accounting is a new nominal ledger function that is available to Opera 3 users. This new functionality allows you to define up to 24 periods in a financial year and to create the calendar for the current financial year, a previous financial year and up to three future financial years. There are various controls but essentially Open Period Accounting provides users with the ability to post to any of these periods provided that they are marked as open for posting. This gives the user total control and flexibility when it comes to updating the nominal ledger. The user can specify at the time of posting which nominal period a transaction is to be posted into as opposed to relying on the Opera 3 system date. Sales or purchase invoices, for instance, can be posted into the current period, a future or a past period, so allowing these transactions to be posted into their correct period for their nominal analysis. Open period accounting is optional. It can be turned on for each individual company. So we go into company profiles, in this case Orion Vehicle Leasing, we can see that the open period accounting has been turned on. If you're using real-time processing, the transactions will reach the correct nominal and period at the time of posting that transaction. The key to open period accounting is the financial calendar. At the top of the screen, we can see that we have the current period and year and the year end date. So in this case, the current year is 2010, the current period is period 10. And in the centre of the screen, we can see the number of periods that have been defined for this particular financial year. And in this case, we can see that it's been set to 12 periods. We can see that highlighted is period 10, and this is telling me this is the current period, and the start date of this period is the 1st of October 2010. There is a description for this particular period, and it also shows me which of the related modules link into the nominal ledger for that particular period, and are they open or blocked or closed for postings. If you look at period 9, however, we can see that these systems have all been marked as blocked. So it will not be possible to post from those modules into the nominal ledger for that particular period. If you look at the year tab, we can see that we have the current financial year, 2010, and we can also see that the financial year of 2011 has also been created. If we go to the action button, we can create the previous financial year and we can create up to three future financial years. Let's create the previous financial year. It says, do I want to base this on a model? And I can choose the previous years that I might want to base as a model on. I'm going to select none. For the previous financial year, it asks me what is the start date and what is the end date. And when I select OK, it's just warning me I'm just about to create the financial calendar for the previous year, 2009. If I select yes there, then I can now see that I have the calendar for 2009 as well as the calendar for 2010 and for 2011. As we can see for period 10 here, we have the status flag. So for instance, for the sales module, I can determine whether it is open for posting to the nominal ledger, whether it is blocked or whether it is closed. An open status means that journals can be posted to the nominal ledger from that related module, in this case sales. A closed status prevents journal postings. A period might be marked as closed when a period end has been run, for instance. A block status is an intermediate state that prevents postings but then can be simply switched to either open or to closed. For each of the linking modules, it is possible to control the posting status individually. So we might, for instance, want to block the purchase processing, but we may want to leave the sales processing open. If we go to period 11 and we mark the nominal as blocked, notice that all the other related modules are also marked as blocked, because if we can't post into the nominal, neither can the sales purchase, fixed assets, stock or payroll. Let's revert that change. OK, in our example here, for the current period, let's go through and let's mark the purchase ledger as blocked 
but let's leave the sales, fixed assets, stock and payroll open. Let's save that change away. OK, let's post a purchase invoice and let's see what happens with that block period. I'm going to go through and going to post an invoice. Notice it's warning me. The nominal period is blocked for purchase postings. Let's put in a reference number. Note that there is a new field called nominal ledger posting date. This determines the nominal ledger period that this transaction will be posted into. Note that we will not accept a posting into October 2010 because we know that that has been marked as blocked, so we need to change the date. Let's change it to November. We know that November is not blocked, it's open for posting, so therefore this transaction will now get posted into that November 2010 nominal period. Let's put the transaction value on. Let's put the analysis for that. And let's post it. And I don't want to capture a document. If we now go into the nominal ledger, and let's view that transaction, let's extend it to period 11, and refresh the data. If we go into the current liabilities, trade creditors, we can now see that that transaction has been posted into period 11 because we know that period 10 had been blocked. OK, we're now starting to get the idea of how open period accounting is working. OK, let's go through and let's post a nominal journal. But let's post this nominal journal into the previous year. I'm going to call this test journal. I'm going to set the date to be 2009. And let's make this a very simple journal. I'm going to post to the first nominal account £100 debit. And to the second nominal account, I'm going to post £100 credit. However, let's set the nominal posting date to be 2009. It warns me. I'm posting into the previous year. Is that OK? Yes, it is. And it therefore goes through and it posts this journal through to the nominal ledger for that particular period. We can see that because if we take a view of the nominal ledger, and this time let's go back into the 2009 financial year, and let's go and look at the fixed assets, freehold buildings, we can now see that that transaction for £100 has been posted into the previous financial year, into previous 10 of that financial year. OK, to conclude, open period accounting opens up all of the nominal ledger periods from the previous to the current to three future financial years and allows us to post into any of those periods in a controlled manner. Nominal journals can hit the nominal ledger immediately when the transaction is posted. The period into which the transaction will fall is based upon the nominal ledger posting date as determined by the user. This makes the nominal ledger a far more powerful and flexible tool in which to analyse your company's financial data. Thank you for taking the time to watch this short video. For further information, please contact a Pegasus partner or visit pegasus.co.uk.